237. Okay. All right. I'm going to start. Huh? And ring, yeah. Yeah. So we'll end early. Okay. Yeah, yeah, it's fine. I couldn't last week. I was last year. I was not. This one? No, it's on on the work on the working one. No, no, because then they'll see. How do I know if an object exists? If I have a float variable, and I just want to know is it there without showing it. Hmm? No, no, no. In the in memory right now. Like, is it gonna know what it is when I? Because it's a secret. We don't want them to know. I don't know if I loaded it. I think I did. But how do I double check that I loaded it? Yeah, but I don't, but, okay, but how do I, like LS and seeing it in R, or if exists. Yeah, it's good. It's good. It's my work. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, okay. That's a better way. Okay. All right. Let's get started. All right. Uh, okay. So we're going to start talking about uh, polls today, getting ready for homework two. And before I do that, I want to just clarify something about the first part of homework two, which involves last Thursday's and last Tuesday's lecture. So um, I don't know how many of you have seen it yet, but the first pr problem involves computing the first, pr the, pr first, the projection to the first principal component. And I don't, I, I showed how, what, what these are very broadly on Thursday. I don't expect you to know what, understand the details of what these are, but for the homework purposes, you just want that vector. And Verena showed you how to get it on Tuesday. If you don't, um, if you don't remember how to, what she did, you can still see the lecture. It's online. But all you need is the vector that represents the projection to the first principal component and represents the value that each individual gets in the space where the most variance is explained among any, all linear combinations. But that's not something that we are describing in too much detail yet. But 
basically that vector um, is what you want to work on for that first part of the homework. All right, so if, if there's something, if, if there's some outcome that affects the variance of your data a lot, it's going to show up in that, um, in that vector. That's why we, we use it there. Okay, so that's, it shouldn't be too, you shouldn't have too much trouble getting that vector. If you do, you can ask questions in Piazza about how to get it, because we did explain it in class. All right, so what we want to do um, today and perhaps part of next Tuesday is hel help you understand what goes on in these uh, websites where they predict the elections. And we're going to try to do it ourselves for the midterm. The last part of this homework, week two, is for you to give me one first shot at what you think is going to happen in the Senate. So for each state, you're going to tell us what you think is going to be the percentage of Democrats versus Republicans. All right, so that, that, that's the last part of the homework. We're not exact, that's not going to be your last shot. We're going to do it one more time, where then we're going to keep save your predictions and, and, and declare a winner of a competition of who, who does the best at predicting the outcome, and we're going to compete against, against Nate Silver, too. Uh, I think we're going to beat him. At least one of you will, <laughs> a few of you. OK, the question is, will, they, will, the, will the half the class beat him? OK, so um, that's what we're going to do. So I assume that most of you are familiar with, with polls, but I'll just go over it just quickly so everybody's on the same page. Um, I'm going to use the, the notebook today. We're going to put this up on the web so you can see some of this code later. Some of it is a little bit um, complicated, and, and you don't, I don't expect you to follow the code right now step by step. Um, but the first thing I'm going to do is uh, load the data from the 90, 2008 polls of the presidential election. Okay, so that's been loaded. Um, And um, wait, let's see. How do I see what's the top? Mm -hmm. Okay. Let's just show the top. Oh, did I not run it? Okay. It's because I can't spell. Oh, sorry. <laughs> Thanks. All right. Um, all right. So let's just see it. Okay. So there's the there's a li there's the first part of the table, and you can what what you see. It's a little bit hard. Um, let me see if I can reduce this a little bit. We'll make it big again later. So what we have now are the a little smaller. There. Yeah, that's better. Okay. So what do we have in this table? This is the poll, the poster. This is the date. And then here is what they have for, um, I guess this is Obama and this is McCain. Okay, this is the 2008 election. Uh, and they also have uh, a, the number of people who were, in, who were asked this question. So what are these posters trying to do? So what they're trying to do is predict the outcome of the actual election. Why? There's many reasons why people want to do this. One is just because readers of newspapers are interested in knowing what's going to happen. People like to know what's going to happen before it does. Other, other more practical reasons is that the, um, the, the candidates try to use this information to see where they should invest in ads and such. So if they know they're going to lose for sure, they don't even bother going to a state. All right, so that's, that's how this is um, practical. They also know where they should be calling to get people out and, uh, and other, other such things. Okay, so, so what, what, I, what we're going to try to understand is how is it that these, these, these polls work and why we think it works. So, so when, when, um, when they give you these numbers, so we have uh, Rasmus, and that's a famous one, gave 50, said 53 versus 44, and this in this picture, it's not shown, but many times when you read it in the newspaper, it gives you a little bit more information. It tells you, it gives you uh, a range. They say this is, the margin of error for this number is plus or minus two. So they're saying they're, they're almost certain that this number that you see, 52, is within two points from the real 
from the actual value that's coming. So that's, we're going to learn first how they do that, and then we're going to see if it actually works, and then we're going to see how, how it is that people like Nate Silver and others did so much better than all these Apoles separately. That's what we're going to do today. So we're going to start with, uh, oops. yep. Is this still just available? It will be. But we're going to, it will be, yeah, but we don't, um, the reason it's not available is because we're going to, I'm going to keep a, so I'm going to keep you something from you to try to get you to um, think through some of the questions I ask without just saying what the answer is. So the way we're going to do that is we have a bag full of balls. This is it, right? Imagine you have a bag. It has 10,000 balls inside. Can you confirm there's balls in there? Yes. So, so there's red balls and there's blue balls. OK? And we want to know the proportion of, of, red, of blue balls or red balls. That's what we want to know. And there's, there's actually not 10,000. There's something like 100 and some million in here. Right? So how, how do you do that? How do you find out what proportion are blue? If I count them all, how long will that take us? Sample. You sample. So the, the, the poles, anybody, everybody knows what that means? We're going to stick our hands in there, we're going to move them around, and we're going to take out, how many would you take out? A hundred? One at a time? A thousand. A thousand, okay. So what if I tell you that every time, to take out a ball, you have to pay hundred dollars. Then what? Do you, and then I'll say if you get it right at the end, I'll give you ten thousand dollars. So I'll, I'll okay. Each ball costs ten dollars. Taking out a ball costs ten dollars. How does this relate to a poll? It takes you have to pay somebody to call and figure out who to ask. So it costs you money to ask people. So I'm gonna so I'm gonna charge you ten dollars to stick your hand in here and grab a ball. So. Now, but I'm going to give you a prize if you get it right, if you get it close enough. Well, I'll define what that means. So let's say I want you to be within 0.01 of the, 0.05 of the answer, of the proportion. Point, oh, sorry, 0.005. So if you say 48.5%, it's 48, you win. Right, so you get where I'm going with this? So you don't want, you, you, if you take out all of them, then yeah, you get it right, but it costs you too much money. So, and um, that's what these pollsters have to figure out. So they, they, um, they are going to take just a few of them, and with that, try to decipher how, what's the proportion is. So what, how does this relate to the election? So the, 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 the balls, the red and blue balls, are the voters. They're, each of them is either red or blue, because they're either voting for the Republicans or the Democrats. We're simplifying a little bit. There's just a few little red-green balls in there. Um, and and you, you have to figure out that proportion. What is the proportion of the 100,000 people that vote? What proportion are going to vote for? In this case, it was Obama. OK? So then, why do I even talk about balls and bags and, and sampling? It's because it's, it's easier to think about it. And also, it's how like most of the statistics, a lot of statistics books are written this way. And you read help files, and you see that they talk about white and, blue, and, white and black balls, and it's just the way people explain these things. Okay, so um, so here's here's a question. So we want to know the proportion p and y minus p. So there's 131 voters. You want to figure out p. That's what we want to do. So what we're going to do first is we're going to take 100 out. 100 is, is um, you can get pretty close with 100 as you'll see. So so I'm defining a, a simple function here um, that basically picks. 100 at random. Right? So you can see this function here, uh, random binomial with 1. It means I'm picking 1 out, and it has a probability p of being a 1, or and probability 1 minus p of being a 0. So I'm, take, I'm taking 100. Did I define 100 already? Oh, I'll do it next. OK. So I ran that, and here it is. I'm going to say n is 100, and p, that's the big secret I'm keeping from you, is the p. But that's already defined somewhere up there. OK? Now, so we got, we did it, um, and we got, oops, where did I go? OK. Yeah. 
Oh, what's going on? Okay. So we, we ran it and we got, let me show you REST real quick so you can see it. Uh, very quickly. Okay, there's there's a result. So I did it once. I just did. I just picked a hundred, and I have red, 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 blue, red, red, etc. Okay. Now we're interested in figuring out what P is. So what do I do with the, with these things that come out red, 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 blue? I'm going to take the average of that. Right? So the average of the hundred that I have is in this case 53. Okay, so that is our, we're going to call that our estimate. So the truth is the P, we don't know what it is, but it's something, and, it's, and we could actually figure it out if we took out all the balls and counted them all. So in, in the polls example, what is the P in the polls example? Do we ever see it? We do? We, lay, we see it on our election day. We don't see it before then. So it's actually a great example of thinking of statistics because there is a truth that we don't see we want to find out. So this is something you should start thinking about when we talk about all this, is that this, this extrapolates way beyond polls in science and finance and other things. You, especially in science, you're many times trying to figure out what something is that you can't see, that you'll never, you, you, you're never able to see, like the, how, the, the way that... Um, how your risk increases when you smoke two packs of cigarettes a day. We'll never know what that is exactly, but we can try to estimate it. So that, that's how this kind of relates. So when you, when you, when you say your, your risk increases, I don't know what it is with two packs, maybe 25%, um, maybe that's too high, but then someone can say, but how do, you know that, you know, that's, how do you know that's not by chance? And you can give a range, so that's related. We can think of it. Um, in this context. So if you have your own problem that you're already thinking about, you want to start thinking about, about some of this. So now I'm going to define something else uh, that's very important, and we, and we are going to use it very, very often in data science. We, we use this. We think about this, and it's called a random variable. So that, that number that came out, that mean that comes out, so the process is you take out 100 balls, and you take the average number, the proportion of blue balls in your sample, that number, that, that, that quantity is called a random variable. So we got 53, okay? But if we do it again, are we going to get 53 again? Let's do it again. Whoa. Now we got 62. Wow, that's, that's rare. Okay. Um, so we got a 62. It was 53, now we got a 62. So what, why is that? Why is it changing all of a sudden? Yeah. You took another sample, so there's luck involved. There's randomness. It's a random variable. Okay? So now I'm going to do... Now I'm going to do something that the pollsters don't get to do. And I'm going to, I'm going to run something called a Monte Carlo simulation of this process. So I, I would love to be able to do this in practice, but I can't. But I'm pretty sure that I understand the, the procedure well enough that I can imitate it on a computer. So what I want to know is how, how much does this random, how does this random variable behave with respect to the true value? That's one thing I could ask. How much does it change? How, 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 um, how sure can I be that, of how close I am to the truth when I, when I do it this way? Okay? So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to do it on a computer 10,000 times. So imagine we would, if we were going to do this ourselves, we'd be picking balls all like, for years. But we can use a computer. We're going to do it 10,000 times. So I'm going to pick 100 balls 10,000 times. Okay? So keep that clear in your head. I'm not picking 10,000 balls 100 times. I'm picking 100 balls 10,000 times. So why am I doing this? I'm doing this because I want to understand how this random variable behaves. I want to understand this thing that I'm seeing. How, what are the properties of this, this number that I get that is random? OK, so I'm going to run this a 1,000 times. See how fast that was? Computers are great. OK, so um, now um, I'm going to show you just the first. Now I have 10,000 guesses. So everybody has a different guess. 
Now I'm going to show you the first 25 that are there. So it goes 0 0.5, 0 0.52, 0 0.54. That's 60. Oh, there's a 64 also. So it comes, it, it's kind of all over the place. All right? So now what, what, what can we do now? What should we do now to understand this a little better? And now we can use what we've learned in the previous lectures. What can I do? What should I do? I want to get a better idea of what can happen and how often it happens. Yeah, I'm going to make a histogram. So I'm going to, I'm going to report how many times 50% came out, how many times 51% came out, how many times 54 came out. I'm going to just make a picture of that. So here we go. There it is. That was the results of our Monte Carlo simulation. So now anybody want to guess what um, percent of, of blue balls is? You're saying 5-5? Five, five? Yeah? OK. So this is a distribution of that random variable. It's very close to the actual distribution. I can do this a trillion times and get an even better idea of what this looks like. But it's, it's you know, um, it's pretty close. So yeah, so you guessed 55. Um, do you, are you willing to bet that it's 55? No. OK, anybody want to bet that it's 55? Good, because you will lose. OK. <laughs> All right. Um, so what, what, what other things can we do? So this is, this is a hit. Now we're going to get to what else we're, we can do to actually win some money. So I should also say that Las Vegas, the casinos, use what we're talking about today to uh, guarantee uh, that, well, to have a very small probability of ever losing money. They can, they can do all these calculations and determine, I can never, you know, for, for us to lose money, we would have to see the average here, and it never happens. So yeah, so the, by the way, that's something that we see. If we, we will never, it's very rare to get 80% blue balls in this particular procedure. It, it probably happens one in a million times. OK, so. Um, so this is so what what you do with random variables what you can do and this is this is a lot of what probability is about in statistics is to figure out things like this so you want to be able to say what is the probability of getting a 55 when 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 I know when I know there's a real p it's the p what is the probability of getting each one of those so the, these are ma calculations that you can make mathematically we didn't do it mathematically. We did it with a, with a simulation. But it's, you know, you're going to get pretty much the same answers. All right? So there's a, in, if, you're ta if you're taking a statistics class, you'll know that we can actually compute this without doing simulations. And there's a, there's a, a, a distribution called a binomial that tells you the probability of seeing each one of these numbers. So we can see, with 100, we can see from 0 to 100. And there's a formula. You don't have to memorize it or anything, you know, but for maybe not yet. Um, but there's a formula that tells you all these things. So we didn't even have to run the simulation. We could have just gotten it from here. So that's what I'm doing next. So next, I'm going to. I, I can. Sh I can. I can show you mathematically that that's the probability of any or any x. I can tell you why that is, and it has to do with counting the different ways you can get. A 50 red and 50 blue and summing them up, it's pretty simple actually, but uh, right now we're not going to worry about that. We're going to worry about getting an answer. Okay, so what I want to show you next is I want to I just very quickly show you a comparison of our simulation with the prediction made mathematically by the binomial. So I'm doing, I'm doing that here and um, this function uh, is giving you the exact distribution. It's, you, it's actually computing that formula for you. So I'm giving x2 is ranging from 35 to 71. I, I'm not doing 100 to 0 to 100 because most of it is 0 or so 0 as far as the computer is concerned. Uh, and uh, I'm going to plot the probabilities for each one. And then I'm going to show you again what we got when we did it 10,000 times. All right. Sweep. All right, there they are. What do you think? Is, the ma is math useful? It seems like it is. Looks pretty close. 
And in this case, I would argue that that up top one is the right one, and this is just what we do, what we get when we do 10,000. If we do a trillion, this is, they're going to look identical. You won't be able to tell them apart. Okay, so the reason, so what, let's, let's review. What is that thing up there saying? It's telling us, if you follow this procedure, you take, up, you take, a, you take 100 balls at random from this bag, um, this is the distribution that it's going to follow. Now, there's, there's a little bit of a, of a, I don't know what I want, I want to say here. I, I'm, I'm not telling you something, and it's that I didn't actually use, for the top one, I didn't actually use the P. I used the average of all my, my samples, but I could have used the P, and it would have looked almost the same. So if you know the P, then you can make that distribution. If you don't know the P, you could, just, you could just say, well, I can make it. You give me a number, and I'll, I'll make it. So it doesn't, it'll change depending on what the P is. It's going to shift. You know, if the P is 70, then it all shifts over. This side, if it's 40, it shifts all the way over there. And this is what I, and, and here I did use the P to generate this. So I guess I should use the P there just to make it. But it's going to look the same. Where would it go? Here. All right, there. Now, that's the same, right? Okay, so that's that. So again, let's really want to understand what that thing means. Okay, so I, I'm, it's this procedure that involves chance, and I'm describing the probability of a bunch of possible outcomes. It's a random variable. It can be anything. I just saw, I just saw one. We saw like 62 at some point, which is pretty rare, but it happens. And we also saw 59. We did it twice back, back when we started. Okay, all right, so now one other little um, point that I guess is important. Maybe I should just make sure that everybody's we're on the same page. So any questions before I keep going? All right, so this is all, what we're doing now is, very, is key for everything else we do going forward. Because uh, you really want to be able to distinguish the signal from the noise, you have to understand what the noise looks like. That's what we're learning today. All right, no questions? Yeah. where you would not expect to see a binary. Oh, there's, there's many contexts where, where you would expect that. Um, one is when you are looking at um, na something that comes from nature. So for example, if you were to count the number of earthquakes every month, that is nature being random. I guess th now we get a little philosophical, right? Because we have to say nature is random. Maybe not. Maybe there's some. Almighty just making it happen, and that's not random, but for, as far as we're concerned, it's, I, you know, we can make an argument about that, and that's for the philosophers to fight about. Once we, once we assume that it's random, that distribution is not going to be binomial or normal or anything, right? What it's going to be? It's going to be like zero, zero most months, every once in a one, two, three. So you see where you can keep going with examples like this, and many, most of them won't be binomial or normal. All right? So, you know, wildfires. Income distribution, that's a little bit harder to argue as being random, but income distribution is not going to be binomial. Uh, so if you think of these as random processes, uh, then, then that's, that's what. So another one would be um, the max, if you take, uh, is that binomial? It's not exactly, it's close though. If you take the median of, uh, well, well, zero, one, it, you can't get, take the median. But sometimes when, when, you have, when you have weight, say you, you have a population and you, and you want to know the um, average weight and you instead take the median of your sample, that random variable is not quite binomial. So there's many examples where it's not. It, it shows up uh, very often when you're, when you're just considering what's very common when you have zeros and ones and you're adding them up. As long as things are independent, then it shows up. But it's, you know, there's many cases where it's not going to be binomial. All right? So why did you ask? Why were you asking that? Because you said, why is he even bothering resampling or? So, yeah, so, so there's, there's, whenever you're adding up zeros and ones that show up independently, that's binomial and that's mathematics. You can show it mathematically. Um, 
Now we're going to move to the approximation, which is the normal approximation, which shows up anytime you average anything that is independent, and you have enough things to average. Any other questions? Oh, right, that's right. So if you let, let's let's let, let, let me let me um, now we're gonna I'm gonna pause and, and answer that question very clearly because this is important. So we're gonna we're I'm about to show you the normal approximation, but that normal approximation is gonna work when the sample size is big. Sample size was a hundred, not ten thousand. If I had made a sample size two. It doesn't matter if you take a million, a million cases of those, of those average of two, it's not normal, right? It's either, with, with two it's either zero or half or one, okay? And there you're, you're stuck with the binomial. All right, so the normal approximation, which we, we talked about before, um, is, applies here. There's two ways you can think about this. If you look at the mathematics, you can mathematically derive that, that that formula when n is big looks a lot like this formula once you standardize. It's kind of a neat result that, th that you can turn that thing into this, but you can't. It's really kind of pretty math. But there's another reason why, why you, you can argue it is that you're taking an average of independent outcomes. So I guess I should pause and, and very quickly say what I mean by independent outcomes. The, when, we re, when we take balls out of a bag and we return the ball, so every time you take one out, it's independent of what happened before. They don't, it doesn't matter what happened before, distribution is again the same. Right? That, that's an important uh, uh, fact for this all to work. When things are, are correlated, that's not the case. Right? If, if, I, if I have a bag with 10 balls, and I take 10 balls out and take the average, that's not a random variable anymore. That's not even a random variable. It's always the same number. Right? If I have 15, um, if I have 15 uh, balls and I take out 10, by the, ta by the time you take out 9, you, you, can, you, can, kind of you can do a better job of predicting what's coming next because you can see what you have. So they, ha they have to be independent for, for this to work. Okay, so that so I just want to point out that when you have a binomial distribution, and this you could, you're going to be able to use this in the homework if you want to do it more efficiently. Um, if you use the the normal approximation, so what I do is I take um, just to show you that this is the case. The, this average that's a random variable. I'm going to subtract its mean and divide by its standard deviation, and then I'm going to make a QQ plot. Oh, where'd it go? Oops, sorry. Okay, looks almost perfect, right? It's very nice. So let me, I want to re-explain re what a QQ plot is. And I want to learn to turn off the R squared thing, which is down here. Okay, so um, what, am I, what, did, what are these points represent again? Let's go over that again. So what, what, this, what happens here is you take, you take the, the you go point by point and you figure out what percentile they are on, on, your, on your data set. So in our data set, the smallest, that's over here, the smallest values we saw once we standardized was negative, was it, well, negative a little bit smaller than, oh, there's a negative four down there. Right, so there's something that once you standardize turns into a negative four. That's, that must be like a 30 something. Right, so that, that's the smallest value. Now I take the second smallest third smallest, right? You see how I have ordered them? And what do I plot it against? So what I do is I say, okay, pick any point on that line. Just in your heads, pick a point. So for that point, you can figure out what percentile it is in your data set. So is that the 25th percentile, the 10th percentile, the 100th percentile? I right, say so you, you just figure out what it is. And now what you do is you say, what, if this were normal, what percentile would, would what value would that have? The 20, what, what is the 25th percentile of a normal distribution? And I, that's how I get the x-axis. So every point has two numbers. The observed percentile, the, 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 the observed value of that percentile, and on the x-axis, the normal, what the normal tells you that percentile should be. So that's why you have a, two axes. And 
If they're the same distribution, then those two should match. And as you can see, they match very well. Now there's this weird pattern. Anybody want to tell me why that is? That it goes like a little staircase? Why is that? Why is it not a line? Why is it a staircase? Say it louder. Yeah, what do, and so you have a, a bunch of ties, right? At 10, at, um, at 50, you'll have a bunch. At 49, you'll have a bunch. Good, thanks. OK. OK, so let's, look, let's go back to the, to the distribution. OK, now, um, so now we know what the, we know what the stand, we know what the distribution of this thing we just saw is. We know it's, no, it's, it's binomial, it's approximately normal. Okay, so here's, here it is again. That's, the, uh, that's what we got from the Monte Carlo. So there, here's another definition I want to give you. And it's the standard error. The, this distribution has a standard deviation. You can compute it by just taking the numbers that you saw, right? We saw 10,000. In, in our Monte Carlo, we, t we had 10,000 outcomes. We take, the, we take the standard deviation of that, right, which is going to be about, oh, I'm supposed to do it here. And you can do it on the computer, and we'll see what it is in a second. But you know it's going to be you know, some num It's going to explain six. It's going to be like this. This is a one, less, one standard deviation below and, and one above. right? It explains about 68% of your data. So when you have a probability distribution function, which is what this is, it's, it's now not just a histogram. This distribution actually talks about probabilities. So that's another connection we want to make. We've talked about, about distributions. You, any list of numbers has a distribution. But when we have a random variable, then we start talking about probabilities. So one just describes proportions. This one describes once we're here, we're talking about random variables, and it's talks, we can talk about probabilities. What's the probability of seeing something this big? Instead of just what proportion of our data is this big? All right, so probability is about talk, is, relates to random variables. And proportions relate to uh, just list of numbers, but there's a connection. Because the, um, you can think of it this way. The probability of seeing a 55 or more is the proportion of 55s or more that you see if you do this a trillion times. You do it a trillion times, and you just compute that proportion. That's the, pro that's the way of thinking about the probability. And in those keeping count, that's the frequentest view of probability. There's also a Bayesian view. OK, so the standard error is the, the standard deviation of that distribution. So let's just look at what that is. So we have that the mean of this thing is 0.552, and the standard error is 0.05. So you can see that up there. OK, so now that we have this, um, now we can maybe ask for guesses that involve, um, let's let you guys fill this in. So any, now, now, I, now we're going to try to guess the, pr the proportion and see how many people get it right. OK, so who wants to try a guess? And you have, to, you, have to get, you, have to, you have to give me an interval that includes the truth, the, the, the p. Anybody wants to shout out a possibility? You have about 40 to 60. OK, anybody else want to try something? You want to try? 0.552? Anybody wants to try something smaller? So the smallest one wins. You're, you're going you're gonna to let him win with 55 to 56? This is like the price is right. No, you already got yours. <laughs> Okay. All right, so not your version is 0.5 what? What? Someone wants to say something. <laughs> You've watched The Price is Right, huh? The 0.559. <laughs> you lost. 
Well, we don't know yet. Maybe it's on the edge. Anybody else? Yeah. 0.552 to 0.555. Who wants to be more of a daredevil? Nobody? That's it? All right. Nobody? You want to try one? All right, so what are, what, are, what are people doing here? What are they doing when they, when they do this? Now we, I guess I can reveal it, but um, reveal what, wh who got the closest. I don't know if anybody else wants to give it a shot. Get a little smaller interval. Okay, so we see what the, we see what the distribution is, right? We, and we can see what the probability is of having something fall in this, um, this, in, this on the truth. We know if, if the truth is something, it will generate a distribution that looks something like this. And we know that this, this distribution is, is, um, is a little bit smaller, right? So let's see, what, let's see how everybody did here. Yeah? Oh, what can I do about that? Mm hmm. What? Where's that? This one? This? No, this bubble. Oh, the speed bubble. That one? Yeah. Thanks. That's all? Doesn't look like. No? It does look like this. This? This and then this. And then that. Okay, thank you. I got it. Okay. Well, go away. Working? Okay, so now I'm going to plot. Now you're going to see the truth for the first time, I think. Uh oh. Oh no, don't tell me. I... Oh, that last one, so close. <laughs> Sorry, you lost. All right, whoever said that last one didn't, it was not on top. Okay, so there, there are the three intervals that people um, blurted out, and, um, and then there's the truth. So how do the, so the polls are, are kind of trying to do this. Um, all right, let's do this. So, so what I'm going to do next is I'm going to tell you, I'm going to show you what the polls do to try to, get, to, try to say a little interval and, and see if they're right or not. Okay, so it's all in this little piece of code. So what we're doing is we're taking a random sample, um, right, from, from binomials. So it's either 0, 1, the probability of P. That's all it's doing. Then we're going to report the average of R of R um, outcome. So we, now we know the distribution of our average. What's the distribution of our average? We, we, we took, is it 100? We're going to do 100. N is 100. Um, so what is it? What, what is the, so we take 100 balls. We take the average. What's the distribution of that average? Let's talk about it. Don't be afraid. It's not a trick question. It's binomial, right? And we know it's approximately normal. What's the mean? And then the mean. So here's, here's another fact you need to know. The mean of our random variable is the real mean, right? the, the, av the mean of the distribution of our random variable is the real mean, the, one, the thing we want to know. And the standard error of our distribution, we can also compute using the, the normal approximation. Or, or we can use the binomial approximation. So that, that little bit, I'm going to let you uh, learn it um, on your own. Because if I start writing out equations, it, it, it's, it's not as important as a concept. So the point is. I just told you that there's a theory for which you can get a, um, you have a random variable, you know it's mean, and you know it's a standard deviation for that random variable. So what we're doing here is we're creating an interval which is, is centered at the average, and it goes two standard errors to the right and two standard errors to the left. Right? So then we have this interval that we create, it's random. That's what the pulsars are doing. Now, what is the chance of this interval 
containing the truth? What is the chance of this interval that's random falling on the truth? If I go two standard errors one side and two to the other, 95, okay? Because 95% 95 of, the, of, of the normal distribution is within two standard deviation from the norm. So we can, we can actually, we can, we can run a bunch of polls. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna to run 50 polls. And there are the intervals. Not pretty, let's just plot them. And there they are. Ooh, what's, didn't do very well. Um, 50, okay, I guess it happens sometimes. So those are the intervals, and you can see that mo it's not 95% in this case. Let's run it again, see if it's is it a bug, the code, or actually, nah. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so we see that um, the pollsters, these would be the different pollsters. And you can see that most, nine, should be 95% of them, um, fall on top of the truth. That would be the election day answer, but some of them are slightly off. Now, what could we do if we wanted to uh, be a little bit more sure about this, about containing the truth? What would be an easy way out? Okay, so I increase, I increase the size of these intervals. So if I do three... Instead of two, change the whole function. Now all of them are all right. So why why not do that? Why not change it to ninety nine then? Why do why do the posters do ninety five? And not ninety nine. Why not do ninety nine point nine nine nine? Then you're then you're sure it's right. What, what, what would these intervals look like? Somebody says something? What would, what would the interval be if I, if I wanted it to be 99.9999? What would, what, what would it be? Zero to one. Zero to one. Big deal. So you say, hey, the, I think Obama's going to get between zero and 100% of the votes. Right? That's not, not saying much. And if, even if I say 25 to 75, is not great. So those are, those are, pretty, those are already pretty wide. Um, five, you know, 44 to 70, that's not, you're not going to sell newspapers with that. So, so if you want to keep them short and, and keep and make, and have the probability go up, then what, what is your other option? The th I want to make those intervals smaller, so I need to make, and I don't, I don't want, I don't want to be just as sure, what else could I do? Say that again? Right, I ask more people. So if I ask more people, where is that? Where can I change in? Here, I guess I just put it here. A thousand people. <coughs> now they're, you see how much smaller they are? I should have kept the axis the same. Sorry about that. But see, now they're, they're much smaller. Now, now I'm doing much better. So you, you, can make, you can make these as small as you want by just making the sample size bigger. But then, as I said earlier, then it costs you money. So that's the, that's the game that they play. All right, so that, that's like statistical inference explained in one hour and a little bit. Um, actually, one hour. So um, now we're going to we're we're try to continue talking about these things as we go through the class. And... You know, we're gonna. It's a. I like. I myself find it useful to go back to to balls in a bag. I find it useful to think of that when I'm trying to map it to whatever I'm doing. Right, so, in in the first homework, where we asked you to show you show us that the Oakland A's had an advantage. Right, there was some. They were they were far away from the cloud of points. I was all exploratory. But what if someone says asked you, how do you know that's not just some fluke? How can you how could you answer that? How could you? How could you come? How could you? How, how could you uh, debate someone that just tells you that? You know, well, sometimes things go up, sometimes go down. How do you know that it's not a fluke? So, this thinking 
can help you do that. It, it'll be a little harder with something like that where we would have to say, well, what's the chance of seeing something be so much farther from the cloud when, there, when there's nothing going on? We can, we can think of, of this example and, and apply it there. It's the same kind of thinking. You think there's a model where, where, there's, no, where there's no effect and then you, you, you ask yourself, how likely is it to see a team be that different? But, and it relates to what we've done here. You would have to say that's a random variable, and under certain conditions, that random variable has a range, and that particular point was way outside the range. That's the argument that people use in, in stati using statistics in science and other fields, in social sciences and other fields, where, where they report p-values. P-values will cover at some point, and it relates to, to this. Okay, now let's get back to the polls. Okay, so, so in this polls, let's 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 think about what. Um, let me go back to the way back. I'm sorry. Here it is. Ugh. Ugh, I'm gonna make it small again. Okay. All right, so these are, these are the polls, and look at the numbers they have. Look at the number of people they asked. Some of them asked 3,946. So they, they were reporting 52 to 44. Does anybody remember what it came out to be? The difference? That one's close. So that's, um, that's a difference of 11. It wasn't 11. It was, I think it was 7.2. Uh, and that number is quite far from, from 7.2, and you have 1,000 voters. So you, now you can start, now, now that what you've learned what you learned, you can actually start figuring out what, how far they should be from the truth, because it's, you know what, you can figure out the standard error using this 3,946. It gives, gives you an idea of how much this random, each, all of these are random variables, how much they should vary given that number. Now there's a couple of things I want to, discuss, to get you thinking about for these polls. It's important as you, as you prepare to try to beat Nate Silver. Um, what, is, it, is this really like picking balls from a bag? Is that how this is, is that how polls work? Do they put all of us in a bag and pull us out? Do they pull all those social security numbers and pull them out? How do they actually do it? You guys know? Yeah. Well, okay, so no, how do they do the polls at first? They don't, they don't go to polling stations. They call. And this is not exit polls, right? Look at the dates. These are the, poll, the polls that come before. So they, they, call, they, they re generate random numbers and they call them. So how is this different? I want you guys to start thinking about this. How is this different from, from taking balls out of a bag? What are di there's different ways this is different. What's one way that it's different? Anybody? I mean, go ahead. Yes, that's an important one. That's the most. That's maybe the most important one. That is eleven three. The election is eleven four. I mean, maybe that's not enough time. But if we go way, if we go back a year, then is it, is it the same bag? A year from, from a year away than today, it changes. So the truth if you want to think of it that way, is changing. So what the truth today is not going to be the truth on November 4. So we're going to see some pictures that help us with that. Any other difference? Yeah, the, the, your example could be biased. How? Uh, so for example, if you have a bunch of people who are voting for the same It's random. It's a random selection of phone numbers. How can it be biased? Um, people who write down their phone numbers. Yes, that's another. <laughs> people who have phones. People with cell phones are weird, right? No, I'm just kidding. So people with cell phones may be slightly different than people with no cell phones, if there are any left. Um, but, but yeah, and also there's another, one, there's another thing that can happen is, anybody want to give an opinion? Uh, yeah. Are they determined by whether you're an elected voter? Yeah, so there's, some, there's a lot of other stuff that goes on here. So they, they, not everybody they call is going to vote, but they might answer the question anyway. 
So they want to know if you they actually have to do more than just so it's different than the ball. So the, another thing is that people might lie on the on the on the elections although in the US it seems like people don't rare you know that on average it's it doesn't happen that don't the people don't lie because they they get pretty close at, when you do when you an, analyze it right. But these are the kind of things you want to be thinking about when you when you go and try to to do better than the current predictions. All right, let's go back to where we were, looking at the data. OK. All right, let's look at some data. So for, uh, another thing I just I forgot to show you when I was showing you the table was that um, there's undecideds. So instead of trying to predict the actual number, we're going to try to predict the difference between Obama and McCain. This is from 2008. So Obama versus McCain, difference. That, what, what, and I'm say, what I'm doing is I'm saying the undecideds are going to split randomly. So they're going to go half. So, so the difference is going to stay the same. That's an assumption, but that's what I'm going to do. Because otherwise, it gets, you have to start doing more complicated things. All right, so that's what I'm, I'm defining diff as the difference. OK, now. This code, I'm not going to go over here, but you, you'll appreciate it for, for future um, use. The dates, if you go look at the dates again, they, are not in a, in a, in a, they were not being friendly to future um, data science students. They're not just like a nice little date. It's, you have to scrape the date. So these, these lines are scraping the dates. And redefining the day as the number of days left until election day. So I'm not going through it, but it's going to be up on the, on the notes. OK, so now let's make the plot. So you see what I'm saying? Like the dates are, dates are tricky to work with in general. And in, in some of these polls, it's, it's really tricky because they'll, they'll have like from this, the poll happened from this day to this day, and that's the character you get. So getting a computer to understand what that means is not straightforward. All right, so this, here's the data. So, sorry, um, the person in the second row is what you were saying. Um, you can now see it, that you have, that you can kind of see a pattern already of the difference changing. I mean, now maybe, I'm, maybe that's just random, but it doesn't quite look random to me. You can see it go up, then it comes down, then it goes up. And if, you, if we do a close-up, we see uh, more patterns. This is, this is all, all the way back to like two years ahead before. So this is the plot of the difference reported by all the folks. So let's look at the last month with the hopes. Whoops, what's that? Get away. This is the last month before the election. Okay, so election day is zero. And these are the polls, the difference reported by the polls. Okay. Um, so these polls have about between 1,000 and 3,000 people in them. And what we're seeing, we see a lot of variability. What is that? Is that the, because everyone took a, a different random sample? So that's what you want. That's what the homework's about, is trying to decipher that. OK, so you see what I'm saying? Like, there, there's a lot of variability. You can see it here. So an individual pollster doesn't get to see this picture. This is the advantage of what Nate Silver and, and others like him did. They took them all and use that data, that meta analysis, to try to figure out what was going on better than what each individual poster did. Each individual poster had to deal with the questions, maybe I, I, have, a ra maybe I have a bad sample, maybe I don't know who the likely voters are, maybe people aren't telling me the truth, maybe I, you know, I, I, I could have done a better job of, of um, picking a sample that was representative. Was so all this stuff. Um, it gets a little bit clearer when you look at the big picture. So that's what we're, that's what, that's, that's, that's again what the second homework is going to be about. So let's see if anybody wants to tell me what they think or what other plot I can do um, to start to get an idea if this is really, whatever it is, 50 different random samples with the truth somewhere. So has anybody done a back of the envelope calculation to see how big the interval should be reported, the 95% interval, based on just assuming it's a random sample? 
It's going to, anybody has tried it? No. It's going to be about one, between one and two. So it's the uh, intervals that are like this big. No, they're going to be like this, right? So now we're seeing much more variability than we expect. Okay, so here's the other little picture I want you to see. Okay. So there is the data split by pollster. Any thoughts? Anybody want to comment on this? What, now, in your mind, imagine every pollster was doing exactly the same thing with balls <laughs> instead of people. Would the plot look like that? Try to think of what that plot would look like. Well, now you can do it on your computer. That's homework, too. So how does this compare to what would happen if everybody's doing the same thing? That's what I want you to get you to start thinking. OK? So um, what I have, the other thing I have up in that plot is a, so let me just explain, just to make sure everybody's on the same page. These are the different pollsters that ask questions. I, I'm sure some of you recognize things like Gallup and Fox. And what's another famous one? Rus Rasmussen, uh, Times. Right? Those are famous ones. There's some not so well known, but they're all reporting um, polls. So then I have, for each pollster, I have plotted what they reported the last month before the election. So you can see that C-SPAN ran one, two, three, four, five, six, seven polls. That's right here, C-SPAN, seven polls. And who else ran a bunch? Pew ran four, and look at that. Look at the answers they got. It went from, well, down here the difference went from seven to 15. Is that, could that happen with a random sample? Homework two. Um, what else do we have? Uh, Ape, this, where's, uh, where's the one that's, okay. So here, these guys were telling McCain was going to win. And so were these guys were saying McCain was going to win. Oh, no, sorry. They weren't saying that. <laughs> I'm looking at the wrong thing. That person was saying it was a tie, AP, down there, just one poll. Okay. So if you were reading the newspapers, you were seeing all these numbers all over the place. And Nate, what was Nate Silver saying? Nate Silver was basically, it wasn't that fancy what he was doing. He was taking the average of all those numbers. It was a little bit more to it than that, but that's basically what he was doing. So you see that red dotted line? That's the average of all those numbers. Or it's the average of each it's, you average each pollster and then take the average. I can't remember what I did, but you can look at the code. Ba basically, you take the average of each poll. And the true, the, the election day number was the black line. Pretty close, huh? So just by doing that, just by taking, forget all this, you know, blog and thousands and thousands of words that were written about all this, had you just taken the average of the polls the night before, you would have seemed like a genius to everybody because you would have predicted the outcome almost to the dot. I mean, it's like a few points off. So what else, another thing we can do here um, is to say, if, let's say you, let's pretend it's November 3, 2008. You guys were in seventh grade? I don't know. I was... Um, much younger, and you are tr you were trying to impress your friends and give them a range. You don't know that the, the difference is going to be 7.6. So what could you do other than take the average? What more can you do to not seem you know like you were too sure of yourself when you said seven? It's going to be seven. What more could you have done? You can, you can use the distribution of points and, and give a little interval. So here you can forget the fact that we did a, that we did, these are each one are polls. We we could forget that the, each ones are polls, and we can treat 
these numbers as if they were a new thing. They're a new sample of, they're, they're a bunch, they're random variables. They're, they have the true mean is their mean. They have a variability that who knows where it comes from. They're calling the wrong people. We don't know what's going on. It's more than just, well, well, you, you homework too, you're going to decide if it's more than just random, random variance. Then you can take the standard error of the mean for these numbers, and you would get a pretty small a distribution around the truth that you, you would have been pretty sure about, uh, that that was going to be the answer. Now, with that said, uh, if, you do, if you did that for 2012, I, I don't think you would have done that well. But still still better than, than, than each individual poll. So what do we have for you uh, to use? You can get data for, for homework two. We're going to give you 2012. Not, this is 2008. You're going to get 2012. And we're also going to give you the Senate race polls. So for the Senate race polls, um, it's very, it, you, all you have to give is a preliminary, out, preliminary outcome Start thinking about how you're going to answer it, homework three or homework four. I don't know when we're going to include it, but we're going to ask you to give us a by-state interval that we're going to then decide. We're going to then use to figure out who, who wins, who, who beats the experts, etc. So start thinking about that when you look at homework two and you look at that final data set. That's the one that you really want to care about. The other one is just to get you understand how statistics works, how averages and standard errors and all that stuff and what it means. Okay? Any questions about this? No questions? Being confident about being doing well in the prediction for the midterms? All right, well, then let's finish the class. There's a, com there's a talk by Andrew Ng. At four in anybody? Else? At four? But where? Anybody know where it is? If anybody's interested, that's why we're ending a little early because a lot of people want to go. Huh? It's deep learning. Yeah.